Hi, in this video I'm building this entertainment console for my game room. It's made out of poplar, which is similar to pine. The dimensions are 23 inches deep, 74 inches long, and 17 inches high. I wanted something to consolidate my amplifier, my PlayStation, the front speakers, the subwoofer, and most importantly, all the wires in the back. The finish is a black gel stain, and all the joints are using Craig pocket hole screws. So that's the final product, and now let's walk through the steps to get to this point. Before we begin, let's run down the supplies that I needed for this entertainment console. There was some 1x12x6 planks of poplar, some 1x3x6 poplar, the black stain, the wood conditioner, the screws, all for a total of $280. A few extra things that I needed, paper, glue, drill, Craig, jig, staining pads, paper towels, table saw and miter saw, and some miscellaneous tools. Step one, obviously, purchase all your materials, supplies, equipment, tools, whatever you need. I already have quite a few tools in my toolbox, so I didn't have to buy anything specific for this project other than the materials, which were the poplar planks, the 1x12s, the 1x3s, some Craig screws, um, the stain, the conditioner, that's pretty much it. Everything else I already had. So this is a view of the, the planks themselves as they came from the lumber store. Step two is to square the ends and match the links. So everyone knows when you buy lumber off the shelf at Lowe's or Home Depot, they're not exactly the same length. They're also not exactly square. So you need to take your time, get your square out, draw a line, cut those perfectly square, and also cut them exactly the same length as you need them. All right, before we continue, a quick safety moment. I wanted to show you something that happened on a previous project that I was working on. I was getting a little too quick and careless with my miter and trying to square ends and measure links and I just laid this this uh, ruler right here on my miter and I had a piece of wood uh, laid across the miter cutting down and the table the miter saw grabbed a hold of that ruler and sucked it in and basically bent it in half as you can see luckily the ruler went away from me, but just imagine if this would have been shot out towards me. Uh, definitely would have been impelled by the object, definitely would have lost a lot of blood, possibly fatal. So be careful when you're using your tools, always remember housekeeping. And now back to the woodworking. Now my measurements are not always as close as they need to be with the miters, so once I get done with the miter, I Go ahead and clamp the pieces together and then I take an orbital sander or some other sander and match them up so they are perfectly the same length. For my sander I used a 40 grit pad to do the sanding to get them even. And this is how it looks after I've sanded them all perfectly even. Step three is edge jointing. Just like the edges, the ends of the planks are not square, sometimes the sides are not square. As you can see, when I made these two up, they don't mate perfectly. That is no bueno. So what I do is I take my table saw, I take each plank, I make sure I get the exact same width on each plank using the table saw, and then I begin running or ripping each piece through the table saw to get them all perfectly flat perfectly straight on both ends. For safety, I use this micro jig to run the wood through the table saw. It's very handy, very easy to use. My table saw is a Bosch branded table saw, and I also use this shop vac with a hose attached to the table saw. Next step is to drill the pocket holes. I use the Craig K4 to do all my pocket holes and a vacuum hose attached to the side. So just run the pieces of wood through the jig one uh, hole at a time and drill it in the center and move on down the line. It's quite simple and very efficient. 
Step five is to camphor and round the edges of the pieces of wood. This is a sample piece of wood just showing this, the camphor that I have created on the wood. And a close up of the camphor bit with the fence. This is the exact camper bit that I used, the 1 and 5 sixteenths by 45 inch degree camper. And a shot of the underside of the table just so you get an idea of the router that's being used to do this work. Here's how the camper looks alongside the fence. Here's the vacuum hose that runs down to my shop back to suck away the wood. And I also used a 1 8 by 3 8 inch rounded router bit. This is one of the breadboards that I made for the ends, showing a camphor and a rounded edge on the breadboard. Step six is to join the pocket holes joints. I use these one and one quarter inch pocket hole screws for soft plywoods, indoor use only. They work fantastic for this poplar wood. And this is the drill bit that I use to run the screws into the joints. And using clamps, I make sure that each piece of wood is clamped tight together and also smooth on each face. This particular piece is the back side of the entertainment console. I need a little bit extra height beyond the 12 inch standard width of the planks. So that's why it looks like this. This is how the back side looks as after completed. It's got all the pocket holes and the pocket hole screws all joined together. And I think this piece turned out really well. You can see the camphor edge on the top. That's gonna to be the back side of the shelf and there's how the edge looks. This is one of the two shelves with pocket holes in the center to attach two 12 inch pieces plus pocket holes on the sides and the back to attach to the back side and the breadboards. This is how the shelf looks as a final product before all the sanding and staining. The Craig holes in the middle, the Craig holes on the back side and on the breadboard edge. This is a close up shot of one of the square drive screws going into the pocket hole. And I didn't mention this earlier, but we also have these vertical supports for the two shelves. And so I just took two 12 inch pieces and cut them to the length of the combined uh, pieces of shelf. Now I'm attaching the breadboards to the end of the shelf. I learned about breadboards when I was making a desk in an earlier project. I really like the look of breadboard on the end of multiple pieces of face joints. You can see how I've camphored the edge of the breadboard to make it look good against the sides of the, the long pieces. Once everything's clamped, you just start screwing in the, the Craig pocket hole screws. Below the shelves is the base. I cut these pieces to the length and width that I needed and then just laid them out here to get a nice visual of what they look like before I started drilling all the pocket holes. And here is the base with the pocket holes drilled. The uh, ends right there need to be turned inside out. That's not exactly how it looks when it's finally put together, but you get the idea. This piece is also needs to be turned inside out before I screw them together. Step seven, sanding. If there's two things I hate about woodworking, it's sanding and staining, but they both got to be done if you want good quality final products. These are the sanding discs that I use, 180 and 220. To, and there's a 320 for my block sanding pad. You want to do all your sanding after you've joined everything so that you can work out the little edges that are from imperfections in the, the joints themselves.
Step eight is staining. You want to blow off any dust on the wood before you stain, so that's important. I use my, my air compressor to do that. These are the two products I use for staining, the Minwax Pre-Stain Wood Conditioner, oil-based, and the Minwax Gel Stain, oil-based. Black color. Black is not very creative for a name. Once the wood's conditioned, you put on the gel stain. You can see here a thick amount of stain is applied with the staining pad. But the gel stain worked quite well on this poplar. This is how the staining pad for the wood conditioner looked. And here's how it looked after one coat of gel stain on each piece. That's one shelf. There's the back of the entertainment console. There are the two vertical pieces between the shelves. There's one of the other shelves. And there's the base. Step nine, assembly. With this base, you can see with my drill bit and the pocket hole driver, it's just too long to fit inside this space. So what I had to do was improvise. I found one of my other square bits, a very much shorter bit, and just tried to work the tools that I had into this tight area to get these joints to be made up. I ended up going to Lowe's later in the day and buying a regular square head screwdriver that would have made this a lot easier, but this is the way I did it at the moment that I had the tools that I had in stock. This is how the base looks fully assembled. You can see here all four sides joined together. It looks very stable, very clean. Pock holes all on the inside. For my two shelves, I wanted to spread the distance between the vertical supports by uh, some interesting number. I thought of the golden ratio to make the three compartments uh, re relative to each other. So if anyone's not familiar with the golden ratio, it's a very simple concept, but it's a very interesting concept and it's used in a lot of different things, architecture, carpentry, natural uh, science, it's, it's all over the place. We're going to ignore all the intricacies of the golden ratio and just talk about the basics for the sake of this video. Golden ratio is a relationship which says A plus B is to A as A is to B. For the sake of the golden rectangle, the lengths A plus B are 1.6 times the length of A, or the short side. And I decided to use this number, 1.6, otherwise known as the golden number, to basically calculate the length of the middle relative to the two outside edges. This is the formula I use to do the math. The entire length minus the three quarter inch pieces of wood vertical supports was 72 and 5 eighths. So the three sections, A plus B plus C, with B being in the middle, equals 72 and 5 eighths. So B in the middle would equal 1.618 times a and A would equal C. So the two outside edges will be exactly the same length and the middle piece will be 1.6 times the outside sections. So doing the math, doing the formulas, I end up with A and C, the two outside sections, equaling 20 and 1 16th and the middle section equaling 32 and a half inches. These are the vertical pieces being joined together with the Craig screws. And this is what the golden number looks like when you use 1.6 for the middle times the two outside compartments. And these Craig screws are just amazing. You can see how sturdy they are, even without any back support. They're just rock solid because they're so efficient in joining pieces of wood. Once the vertical supports were on, I attached the back to the shelf, the entertainment console. So I clamped them together and screwed 
the back side of the vertical supports to the back side of the entertainment console. Then I attached the base to the bottom shell. And this is how it looks with the bottom shelf, the back, the vertical supports, and the base all combined. Still the top shelf to be attached. I needed a hole in the back to run all my wires through. I just did one hole in the center and not any holes on the outside compartments, just personal choice. Used a one and a half inch spade bit here and cut that hole. As you can see, there was some chip out after I got done. So what I had to do was just kind of clean up that circle to make it look right. Here you can see some of the wood that still needs to be cleaned up. I used this coping saw blade to do it. It seemed to be very effective at cutting that hole. I just moved the saw blade back and forth and it seemed to work pretty well. At one point I put my hand on the other side and just worked it back and forth with two hands. Once cleaned up I stained it so it looks really good now. And this is how it looks, uh, just minus the top shelf. Now I clamp the top shelf so that I can attach it with pocket hole screws. Some close-ups of the um, top shelf laid on top with the screws ready to be screwed in. Just like with the base, uh, this inside area is just too short to use a drill and a normal driver. So this is the screwdriver that I bought from Lowe's that I mentioned earlier. Just a square head screwdriver. It worked very well. Just screwed the screws in with the screwdriver until they were hand tight. And then I proceeded with the plugs. I used standard Craig plugs for this. I kind of wish I would have used Poplar, uh, but I used these because they were already in my toolbox. This is how they look after they were inserted. And what this video doesn't show is that after I insert these plugs, I allowed them to dry for an hour or so, and then I sanded them down and stained the inside again and the outside. I did a second coat of stain over the entire shelf. Success! All done! This is how it looked once I had put it inside my game room. I ran all the wires through the middle hole that I created, put my amp in the middle, put some old records on the left side, my guitar amplifier on the top left, and then I had my PlayStation on the right side with the controllers and some headphones and then my subwoofer is on the top right there. So it turned out really nice. I'm very proud of this. You can't see it too well with the dark color in the room, but you know there's the camfered edges, the rounded bottoms. Just a very nice final product. And I'll turn down the lights so you get an idea of how it looks when the, the lights are low for watching movies. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I enjoyed making this and I hope to see you on any other videos that I make. Thank you.